Good morning. Welcome you all to the fifth Sunday of Pentecost, a day when we also celebrate All Saints Sunday. I welcome those who are worshiping with us for the first time, both here in the sanctuary and online. I thank Sean Dooley, who is our tech person this morning. Also, the cupola this week will be lit in memory of Brent Parish Williams by his grandparents. This morning we will celebrate communion and as a part of that we will pass the peace. Uh, people are welcome to shake hands. If you would rather not do that, just fold your hands and nod and wish one another the peace of Christ to be with them. I know that Gail has at least one announcement. Good morning. Good morning. I want to give a th big thank you to everybody who helped with last week's trunk or treat. It would not have been the success that it was without decorated trunks, sharing on Facebook, cotton candy making, craft making, inviting friends and family. So thank you very, very much. It was so nice to see some familiar faces we haven't seen in a while and lots of new ones as well. But there's no rest. The next discipleship opportunity, <laughs> um, save the date, November 28th, is our Advent workshop. We're going to bring it back in person, and we are inviting those outside of just our church community. For that reason, we are requiring registration, so please keep an eye out for that in the Hilltop News and on Facebook. Um, the theme this year is the thrill of joy, a weary world rejoices. It's been a long 18 months, so we're looking for some rejoicing. Um, so please invite your friends, spread the word, um, share on Facebook, and even for the pictures and posts from Trunk or Treat, Still, please comment and share. The more comments and shares, the more people see them because of Facebook's mathematical al algorithms. Um, so anytime you see a post from the church, please share it, because then, or at least like it or comment, because then more people will see it. Thank you. Thank you. I know Don, Don Putney has a couple of announcements. Morning. Good morning. The first announcement is that after church, there is going to be a meeting of the uh, Inreach Ministry, which probably, if you think about it, Inreach was named because we have an outreach and we wanted to differentiate. It's really a fellowship committee, and right about now, we are meeting so that we can prepare information for the council about having coffee hour again. It's a time of fellowship, and if you would like to join us in preparation of that information to go to council, please join us at 11.15 to, today. Also, again, echoing Gail's comments as far as uh, trunk or treat, it was wonderful, and wonderful to have that parking lot, that wonderful open area to hold it. And with the planting that is coming, we have a sign out there that we have considered uh, changing because it's getting tired and old. And Glenn Reed, uh, a graphic designer and member of our church, made up a design. But the council would like your input. So I'm putting out the request as to very young, 10 to 90, young to old, if you have ideas about what you'd like that sign to say that represents us to the community and welcomes them in, by all means, Send your requests, your designs, your desires, and your thoughts to me, the vice moderator, Don Putney, care of the office, and I'll put it together so that it can be looked at by people to make a decision of what we're going to have for a sign in the spring. But do it soon so that we have time to work on that. Thank you. I also know that Patrick Clerken has an announcement. Good morning, everyone. Good, good morning. So we are having another young adult meetup uh, later today at noon, and it's going to be going to Harold Parker. So I'm glad to see that it's nice out like last Sunday again. And if you don't know what the young adult meetup is, we've had a couple meetings so far, but we are essentially a group for 20 and 30 something post-college um, uh, members of the church and their friends. Uh, we do events like go to the Top Shield Fair, or, um, or going, to, going apple picking, stuff like that. So if you're around or if, uh, if, if one, of, uh, one of your relatives or friends are around at noon, we're going to be meeting here and going over to Harold Parker. Thank you. Thank you.
The outreach ministry is continuing to collect candy for troops for treat, uh, treats for troops, I should say. And also in uh, Putnam Hall, as you leave the sanctuary, they have a table with information on blanket Sunday over the next couple of weeks. They'll be doing this and the donations go to buy blankets that are used by Church World Service uh, to help refugees and those who are affected by natural disasters. Also, Heidi Hastings, the chairperson of our fair ministry, has uh, told me that the fair flyers are up all around town. Uh, the fair is uh, fast approaching. And uh, again, as Gail said, uh, please like and share the poster that is on our Facebook page. Also, a reminder that wreaths can be ordered that are being made by members of the church, and they will be available for pickup uh, the Sunday after Thanksgiving. Just a couple more announcements. Uh, a big thank you to the youth ministry for raking the Hilltop Playground last Friday evening. They do a monthly service project, and that was the project for the month of November. And they meet every Friday at 7 p.m. This Friday, they're going to have their Big Bang and will be going to Town Line Bowling. The Young Disciples meet every Friday night at 6.30, and they will be up in Fellowship Hall. Also, the Senior High Youth Ministry, as many of you know, each November, they get together with Brenda Sutherland, and they make fudge and chocolate-covered Oreos as care packages. And these are sent uh, to our college students. They get them right after Thanksgiving so that they have them as they study for finals. If you have a son or a daughter who you would like to receive a care package, uh, please notify me, there's the link in the Hilltop News. Are there any other announcements? If not, then let us enter into the presence of our holy God that we might rejoice in the love that is from everlasting to everlasting. Jesus, my Savior, Lord, there is none like you. All of my days, I want to praise the wonders of your mighty love. My comfort, my shelter, tower of refuge and strength, let every breath, all that I am, never cease to worship. Shout to the Lord, all the earth, let us sing. Power and majesty, praise to the King. Mountains fall down and the seas will roar at the sound of your name. I sing for joy at the works of your hands. Forever I love you, forever I stand. Nothing compares to the promise I have in you. Please join me in the call to worship. Come sing of the one who walks beside us and this day is living still. The one who now is closer than the thoughts our hearts despair. He will offer words of comfort, words that challenge and delight. And our hearts will burn within us in our journey to the light. <laughs>
please join me in the prayer of confession. God, who is slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love, here in the peace of your sanctuary, I confess that I have not always been faithful in the wisdom of your ways. I have not loved you with all of my heart and soul and mind and strength, and I have not always loved my neighbor as myself. In your endless mercy, forgive what has been and set my feet once again upon the path of righteousness. This I humbly pray in the name of the risen Christ, who laid down his life that I might have forgiveness of sins and fullness of grace. Amen. Good people, please join me in the assurance of pardon. People of God, hear the good news. If anyone is in Christ, that person is a new creation. The old has passed away, and the new has come. Let us rejoice and be glad, for in Jesus Christ there is forgiveness of sin and fullness of grace. And eternal life in the kingdom which has no end. Blessing and honor, glory and power be unto him. Amen. I invite you to pass the peace and share it with one another. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. And who is this? Oh, I'm sorry. This is uh, friend Chandu. Chandu? Chandu. How do you spell it? C-H-A-N-D-U. Chandu. God bless. Thank you for being here today. God bless. And also with you. David, peace be with you. Liz, peace be with you. Peace be with you. Please be seated. We have been through so much, and yet there is still so much to celebrate, so much for which we can give thanks. For we are here, and the pews are coming alive again, and God is good. Let us give thanks for all of our blessings as we come now to God's altar with our tithes and our offerings. Please join me in the prayer of dedication. God of all the saints in heaven and all the saintly souls here on earth, I come to your altar this day with gratitude for the blessings of food on the table, a roof over my head, and all of the grace-filled moments of laughter and love that truly make life worth living. Through all that I give and all that I do, 
I pray that we in this community of faith may be a blessing unto others. This I ask in the name of the risen Christ, who has called us to follow him. Amen. spoke words of wisdom and life, only the one they call Jesus, understood what people are like, nobody other than him, who performed miraculous signs, only the one they call Jesus, healed the sick, gave sight to the blind, nobody other than him, Hosanna, Hosanna. and sing who took children into his arms only the one they call Jesus spoke to storms and made them very calm nobody other than him who raised Lazarus up from the dead only the one they call Jesus made a feast of fishes and bread nobody other than him Hosanna, Hosanna, praise him, come praise him, Hosanna, Hosanna, lift up your voices and sing. Who made friends with people despised, only the one they call Jesus, turned the water into good wine, nobody other than him. God people following him, only the one they call Jesus, changed their lives, forgave all their sin, nobody other than him. Hosanna, Hosanna, praise him, come praise him, Hosanna, Hosanna, lift up your voices and sing. Please be seated. My sisters and brothers, please join me in the responsive call to prayer. Draw near to God, and God will draw near to you. Let us lift up our hearts to the Lord. Let us enter now into this time of sacred silence. Good people are there. Prayers that you would like to lift up to the Lord this day. So sorry to hear uh, Joe's niece, Laurie, Laurie, is in the final stages of Huntington's and is entering a hospice facility. We ask that God's grace be with her and with her family. Lord, in your goodness. In our prayer. Also lift up in prayer 
Leslie Musiak. Okay, I'll get that one next, thank you. <laughs> I don't have eyes in my back head, so I appreciate you letting me know. So we lift up Leslie Musiak uh, as she continues uh, to say her sacred goodbyes to her mother, Ruth. There will be a service out in Orange, Massachusetts this coming Friday. We ask that God be with the entire Musiak family and all of Ruth Shaw's extended family. Lord, in your goodness. Hear our prayer. I'd like to lift up Diane Downing, who after her surgery this past summer, her iron dipped dangerously low and she's been receiving infusions since October. And so I ask that God, surround her with love and strength and healing. Lord, in your goodness. Hear our prayer. And I do thank you all for waiting for me to get to you because with my hearing, I have to get a little close. <laughs> well, I want to uh, announce uh, that my wife Maeve and I are happy to share that our son Dylan and his wife Leanne are expecting their first child in May. Oh, so we li little Dylan. Little Dylan. <laughs> uh, and they're expecting when? Uh, in May. In May, their first child. And so we ask that God be with them as they prepare for this wonderful blessing. Lord, in your goodness. Yes, David. Yes, we all have probably heard about the terrible tragedy at the concert in Texas, and we ask that God be with all those who are grieving. Lord, in your goodness. Also lift up in prayer, Kelly Piacopoulos, that is Kevin and Linda Welch's daughter. She continues to recover from her very serious stroke, and we ask that God continue to give her and her family strength. Lord, in your goodness. And we continue to remember Sandy Hayes' son, Billy, as he continues his chemotherapy treatments. Lord, in your goodness. I also ask for prayers for Marie Brown. She is my aunt. Her husband, Jack, passed away last week, and we ask that God be with her. Lord, in your goodness. Let us pray. God of everlasting grace and glory, we give you thanks for this day, and we give you thanks that you have called us into your presence where there is healing and there is hope, and there is a joy that the world cannot give or take away from us. Lord, we know that you have heard our prayers, those, both those we have spoken and those that are stirring in our hearts. Gracious God, as we have spent this time with you, we pray that as we go through the week ahead, we may sense your spirit beside us, but also ahead of us, calling us to where you want us to be and to what you want us to do. And we pray this so that in all ways we may share the light of Christ's love and that we might shine it faithfully and fully into the world around us. All this we ask in his name. Amen. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart, I want to see you, I want to see you, to see you high and lifted up, shining in the light of your glory, pour out your power and strength as we sing holy, holy, holy.
Today's scripture reading comes from the Gospel of Mark, chapter 12, verses 38 through 44. And in his teaching he said, Beware of the scribes who like to walk around in long robes and like greetings in the marketplaces and have the best seats in the synagogues and the places of honor at feasts, who devour widows' houses and for a pretense make long prayers. They will receive the greater condemnation. And he sat down opposite the treasury and watched the people putting money into the offering box. Many rich people put in large sums. And a poor widow came and put in two small copper coins, which make a penny. And he called his disciples to him and said to them, Truly I say to you, this poor widow has put in more than all those who are contributing to the offering box. For they all cont contributed out of their abundance. But she, out of her poverty, has put in everything she had, all she had to live on. Here ends the reading of the word.
Would you pray with me? May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts upon the sacred scripture be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and always our Redeemer. Amen. Did you hear about the hospital administrator who had an unusual encounter one day with a patient? The administrator was on her way to a meeting when the patient came tearing out of the operating room and started running down the hallway. The patient was still wearing his hospital gown and it was obvious that he was terrified. So the administrator stopped him and did her best to calm him down. Whoa, 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 she said, what's wrong? The patient told her that he was getting as far away from the operating room as he could and that it was because of something one of the nurses said. Really, what did the nurse say, the administrator asked. Well, the patient said her exact words were, be brave, an appendectomy is really a simple operation. What's wrong with that, the administrator said. An appendectomy really is a simple operation. I know that, the patient said, but the nurse didn't say it to me. She said it to the doctor doing the surgery. <laughs> when was the last time you were afraid? I mean, really afraid. Maybe it was when someone you love was dealing with a serious health issue. Or maybe it was when you heard a rumor that there was going to be layoffs at the company where you work. Or maybe you're anxious and afraid because of everything that's going on right now. For example, did you hear about the terrifying poll that came out this past week? According to the poll, 17% of the people in general in this country believe that violence may be necessary, violence similar to what we saw on January 6th, to get the country back on track. And that number goes up to 39% when it comes to people who say that the last election was stolen. 39% say that violence may be necessary. Does that scare you? It terrifies me. Then there's the ongoing pandemic, the shaky economy, and uh, climate change. I'm also anxious and afraid that some of the people who stopped coming on Sunday morning during the pandemic might never come back. So what do you think? Are you anxious and afraid, maybe even just a little? If you are, then you might want to join me in taking a closer look at what happened that day when the widow went into the temple and put her two copper coins into the offering box. It was the smallest coin available at that time. Now, if anyone had a legitimate reason to be anxious and afraid, it was that widow. That's because it wasn't easy being a widow back then. In those days, a wife was completely dependent on her husband, and if he died, she was in serious trouble. You see, women back then weren't liberated the way they are today. So they didn't have careers with high-paying jobs, and there definitely wasn't a welfare system that they could turn to when times were tough. That was the widow's reality. When she went up to that offering box and she put in all the money she had in the world. And you know what that means. It means that after she did that, she didn't have any money to buy food that day or the day after that or the day after that. The widow knew that, which is why she could have just put one of the coins into the offering box, or she could have decided not to give anything at all. But the widow, she didn't do that, did she? 
No, instead, she put both of the coins into the offering box, and she did that because she was a woman of great faith. Jesus knew that. It's why he praised her and said to the disciples, truly I say to you, this widow has put in more than all the others contributing to the offering box. For they all contributed out of their abundance. But she, out of her poverty, put in all that she had, everything that she had to live on. Yes, that widow was an amazing woman. She was a woman of great faith. You can also see that by looking and comparing her to the scribes and the Pharisees who were in the temple that day. Now, those scribes and Pharisees would never admit it, but they were afraid. It wasn't a fear of not being able to put food on the table or being able to keep a roof over their heads. Their fear was all about what people thought about them. Jesus knew that, too. It's why he said they liked to go around and parade around in long flowing robes and why they always wanted the seats of honor when they were invited to a banquet or a feast. It's also why they put those large sums of money into the offering box. It's true they probably loved the Lord and they probably wanted to see God's will done on earth as it is in heaven. But that wasn't the main reason why they put the large sums of money into the offering box. They did it because they wanted people to be impressed. They wanted people to see them as rich and important because they were afraid about what those people thought. The widow, she wasn't like that. She didn't care what people thought about her. After all, think about it. If she cared about that, if she was afraid about what people thought of her, she wouldn't have embarrassed herself that day by going into the temple and putting those two measly coins into the offering box. She would have asked somebody she knew to put her coins into the offering box along with their offering. Yes, the widow was very different from the scribes and the Pharisees. And when you put this all together, this story is asking you and me a question. And that question is simply this. Are you going to be like the scribes and the Pharisees or are you going to be like the widow? Are you going to go through life with a heart full of fear or a heart full of faith? And let's not kid ourselves here. How you answer that question will make all the world of difference, not only to you, but also to everyone else. That's because when you go through life with a heart full of fear, it will lead you to a life full of anger and bitterness and complaining. When your heart is full of fear, it will lead you to a life full of mistrust and finger pointing, and it will open the door to moments of violence like we saw on January 6th. On the other hand, when your heart is full of faith, it will lead you to a life full of hope and joy and love. When your heart is full of faith, it will bring out the best in you and it will make it possible for you to see the good in others and the good in the world around you and the good in yourself. So instead, when there's a problem, instead of looking for a person to blame, you'll look for people who will work with you to tackle the problem. The difference that a heart full of faith can make can be seen in a wonderful parable that goes like this. One night a man had a dream. In the dream the man died and went to heaven. Before he passed through the pearly gates though, he asked Saint Peter if he could spend a few moments in hell so he could see what it was like down there. 
St. Peter agreed, and when the man got to the gates of hell, he was surprised. As he peered through those gates, he saw a long table with all kinds of delicious and delightful delicacies on it. The people who were sitting around that table, however, were hungry and miserable. The man couldn't figure out why until he realized that the only thing they had to eat with were four-foot-long forks. Well, that image haunted the man as he returned to heaven. When he passed through the pearly gates, though, he was even more surprised to see an identical table with all of the same delightful and delicious delicacies on it. The people sitting around the table in heaven, though, were well fed and full of joy, even though the only thing they had to eat with were the same four-foot-long forks. That puzzled the man. So he went to St. Peter and he asked him about it. I don't understand, the man said. How come the people in hell are hungry and miserable while the people in heaven are well fed and full of joy, even though the only thing they have to eat with are the same four foot long forks. St. Peter nodded his head. It's really simple, he said. In heaven, they've learned to feed each other. Good people, it doesn't just have to be that way in heaven. It can be that way right here, right now. So let us continue to fill our hearts with faith so that we can keep on feeding each other and bring a little more love and laughter and joy into this crazy, mixed-up world. Amen. My sisters and brothers, the table is ready. Let us come that we might be fed spiritually, that our hearts might be nourished as we break the bread and share the cup with one another. The table that we celebrate is open. Therefore, all who wish to know the risen Christ are welcome.
Please be seated. Let us pray. Eternal God, you have created the heavens and the earth, giving life to every thing. So we thank you for all the gifts of creation and for the gift of life itself. We are humbled that you have made us in your own divine image and that you continue to reach out to us in love when we act as though you have no claim upon us. As we gather around this table, we rejoice in Jesus Christ, the only one eternally begotten of you, who was born of your servant Mary and shared the joys and sorrows of life as we know it. Together we celebrate Christ's resurrection and we await his return at the end of time. Until then, we ask you to send your Holy Spirit upon this bread and this cup. Bless all of us in our eating and drinking at the table, that our eyes may be opened, and we may recognize the risen Christ in our midst, in each other, and in all for whom Christ died. Amen. On that sacred and solemn night, Jesus took the bread and after he blessed it, he broke it and he gave it to his disciples and he said, take, eat, all of you, for this is my body broken for you, ministering to you in his name, we give you this bread. Let us eat of the bread. May the spirit of love that was in him be in us also.
In like manner, after supper, he took the cup and he blessed it. He gave it to the disciples saying, take, drink, all of you. For this is the blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sin. Ministering to you in his name, we give you this cup. Let us drink of the cup and rejoice in the promise of everlasting life. Let us pray. We give you thanks, Almighty God, that you have called us to your table and granted us the presence of the living Christ. As you have strengthened our faith and our love for one another, send us forth now into the world in courage and peace, rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit. For we ask it in the name of our Savior, Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. <laughs> 